So NIAB is really the UK leader in crop science, so we're really about getting crop science and engaging with farmers in the industry. So we have a real focus on crop improvement. So we register that, re that um, information with farmers. So we're always engaging with the industry. Because we have a focus on crop improvement, a lot of our work is engaged with genetics and breeding. So it's all about breeding higher yielding, less intensive varieties. Members. Are you happy with that first bit? You said quite a few sows. I know, I did. And was that was it? Yeah. Yeah. Must it was, hopefully. Yeah. Can we try that again? Yeah. Okay. Let me just go behind you. <laughs> we'll buy you. <laughs> Bill, if you can give us a bit of background about Naya, what you do and so on. Naya really is the leader in crop science in the UK. So we are very focused on crop improvement and a lot of the crop improvement comes from our genetics and breeding program which is really focused on yield improvement and utilization of inputs all about farmer focused research should we just carry on yeah so we are so trying to get rid of so from the english language yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we focus on variety uh, improvement as well. We have a variety choice and variety input management systems, both of which are really important in terms of uh, managing crop inputs on farm, which is all about on farm profitability. We're a membership organisation, so we have very, very close links with the industry and the farming community. And our members get access to specialists like myself, both national and international experts. We have a whole uh, range of open days and membership days where we showcase the research we're doing and we have a wide range of publications for members who increasingly have access to some digital services online. Our genetics and breeding programme is focused mainly on UK but increasingly we have an international programme of both pre-breeding and actual breeding and for example NIAB at Cambridge we're working on rice breeding not something that most UK farmers would realize. The genetics and breeding program that we have is mainly focused on UK crops for UK farmers but increasingly NIAB is an international research organization so we work in China, in the Philippines, in Vietnam even working on crops like rice and so we're involved with rice breeding programs all around the world. NIAB has a big history in variety choice and um, we give a lot of um, good advice about variety choice and how to manage varieties on farm. NIAB has a very long history um, dealing with varieties and variety choice and variety management are crucial, crucial decisions on farm. NIAB has a long history of, um, with varieties and variety decisions and variety management on farm is crucially important. We have some of the highest yielding varieties in the world, but the management of them is, is really important. We're getting far more newer varieties in with good disease resistance and high yield. So um, it's becoming, you know, the, the story is ever changing as to how to manage them to the best. Um, at NARB we have a very strong track record in disease testing and a lot of skills um, in disease management. So alongside the variety agronomic characteristics, we can piece those together with the, the disease characteristics and how to manage the varieties to the best on farm. Well managed varieties allow the farmer to um, get much more profit and, and run a very profitable, efficient business. The better managed the varieties are, the more profit they're likely to make. So plant breeding is important because we need to keep uh, improving the yield and the quality of, of new varieties for farmers and also um, making sure they're safeguarded against new pests and diseases that might emerge. So one aspect we're specifically doing here is actually we're taking wheat back to its ancient relatives. So this is what wheat would have looked like 10,000 years ago and it's a cross between something like this and something like this. I mean, very, very different species. Um, and this was the basis for uh, the start of agriculture 10,000 years ago. So what we think was happening is that the very early farmers were growing a wild relative of this species, and the goat grass was a weed in the same field. And we think there was a, a pollen from this goat grass landed on the flowers of the 
primitive wheat, which then gave rise to this, this new monster, uh, which is the basis of all cultivated wheat grown nowadays. What we're trying to do is to recreate that event from 10,000 years ago, and in that way we can bring diversity from the ancient species, both of them, into, um, into modern wheat varieties. So this can be crossed with modern wheat varieties to give much more diversity that plant breeders can use to take yield and disease resistance forwards. So when we recreate uh, and we bring in the diversity from the goat grass to this, uh, this new primitive wheat, we can cross this with modern wheat and bring in all the diversity and make that available to plant breeders to improve yield, quality and disease resistance.